And a specific example is maybe XML. And while ActionScript has a, a pretty robust XML object, um, with quite a bit of functionality, there are one or two things that it doesn't have. And an example is, you know, XSLT capabilities. And if I was still a C or C++ developer, if I wanted to do some XSLT, you know, I'd probably get libxslt, libxml, write a little bit of code, and call it a day. In Flash or Air today, there's really, you know, not a lot that you can do other than maybe get your own XSL implementation and sort of write it yourself in, in ActionScript. So this C here, you know, really doesn't do me that much good on Adobe's platform, but, you know, maybe it could. I've been working on an experimental technology that can take C and C++ code and actually translate that into ActionScript. And you can take that ActionScript and you can actually use it in a Swift to develop Flash apps and Air apps and so forth. And I'll show you sort of a real quick demo of going back to... Thank you. So sticking with the, the sort of XSLT, I've got this simple application. And you know, don't let the impressive visuals fool you. It really is quite simple. <laughs> So I'm just going to grab out of Word document here, or RTF document rather, style sheet. I'm just going to paste it in what is really just a text field component. Grab a little bit of data over here. I'm going to paste it in this text field, and I'm just going to hit the button here. And I'm going to basically call what is the action script equivalent of loop XSLT. And I'm going to have it act on the XML, the style sheet, create a string, and jam that into a text field as HTML text. So this is actually live. I'll just change something real, real quick. I'm good buddies with him, so I can work on a first name basis. And you can see it actually does go through. And not can. Woo! So what I've essentially done is I've taken the C source for libxslt and libxml, and I've run my tool on it, and I've gotten some action script as output. And for this application, I sort of wrote a little bit of not exactly pretty action script code that sort of bridges the gap between the C and the C and the action script. But once I've done that, I can do something along the lines of extending the XML object to make doing an XSLT transformation basically the single line you see at the bottom of, of the slide here. So, you know, there's a fair bit of nifty stuff in C and C++, and obviously there's the XSLT library. There are various other libraries. But another sort of interesting category to keep the non-C and C++ fans um, interested is interpreters for various scripting languages are actually written in C and C++. So once you have some C and C++ capabilities, you know, it's not a stretch to be able to say, well, let's take the Ruby interpreter, the PHP interpreter, et cetera, and sort of port that to ActionScript and be able to leverage, you know, PHP, Python, Lua, et cetera, code in your, in your actual Flash and Air apps. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, but once you start talking about something more complicated like an interpreter, it's not just, you know, calling some XSLT function. It's kind of a whole program. And in C, you know, you have your sort of one function that runs for the duration of the program. And that's obviously incompatible with, you know, the sort of flash development model where you have little snippets of code that sort of uh, respond to events rather than just run all the time. So the tool set that I've developed will actually take your synchronous C code and convert it to asynchronous AS3 code to keep it from blocking the UI while it's running. And a sort of interesting side effect of that is you can sort of approximate multi-threading with this technique. And so I've got a quick demo of that too. Actually, let me show really one more slide. This, is, this code is not, you know, you don't have to read this, but the, the sort of key takeaway is it's calling pthread create, which is a C multi-threading library function that actually will create a thread. And what this does is this little program sort of spins off a thread for every fractal that it's rendering. And so I took this and I actually ported it to Flash. And so you can see it's kind of rendering all the, the fractals at you know, sort of different speeds depending on the level of complexity. Yeah. But you can see they're all sort of running. I can drag them around. It's not you know, sort of freezing the UI or anything along those lines. So that's pretty cool too. <laughs> so those are some kind of, you know, nifty demos that kind of illustrate the point, but I went ahead and, and I ported a slightly more complex application. 
You guys might recognize him. No! a little bit, you can see some of the console messages sort of scrolling in on, on Flash-based widgetry oh here. So that's pretty cool, too. Oh, oh, <laughs> so there's actually, you know, quite a bit of C code that is, you know, pretty interesting to port. Quake is kind of one example, but I think more realistically, there are a lot of interesting libraries. There's, you know, encoding libraries for various media. There's, you know, various internet protocols, image processing, et cetera, et cetera. And as I mentioned, sort of the interpreters. Um, and, you know, potentially your sort of existing legacy logic or business logic, or, you know, in the case where you have maybe, say, PHP, you could imagine porting some server-side code actually into your Swift, which is, you know, especially interesting with, uh, with you know, Air and being able to sort of you know take your your sort of whole application to the client side, and you know as I also showed, rather than having to sort of dink with all this C and C plus plus, you can sort of make nice wrappers on this and actually have it play pretty pretty cleanly with the rest of your ActionScript code. That's about it.